It's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mark from the States. How are we doing today? I am doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate each and every one of you. As always, you guys are outstanding. Thank you for coming. Uh, one of my favorite channels is Tom the Taxi Driver. Um, if you don't know about Tom the Taxi Driver, links to his channel and to this video, you just got to scroll down, down. Uh, I did all the work. All you got to do is click it. It takes you right there. Go support his channel. It's so important that you go and support these original content creators. I say this, uh, I have to say it every video to just let the people, because there's going to be one of you out there who didn't know, or, uh, oh yeah, you know, who will go over there and do it. Because it's important that you support them. Without them, I'm not able to learn and see new and incredible things. Um, so please, I beg you, I, I implore you to go over there and, uh, <clears throat> and show your support to his channel. He's great. Um, and he's given our channel his blessing to watch and learn from his life experiences behind the wheel of a black cab. I, when I get to London, when, whenever that may be, uh, definitely would love to get into one of these. They're so iconic, right? So I'm not expecting to get into Tom's cab, but I would love to ex have the experience of being able to ride in one for sure. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things I think I have to do. I'm, I'm going to have to take a photo of a red phone box, right? I'm going to have to take a photo of a post box. I'm going to have to take a, a, probably have to get on a double-decker bus. I know a lot of you are probably cringing. Oh, why? There's so much more to see. You're right. There is. I intend to see all that as much as I can. Uh, but there's just, you know, these things. My first time there, I got to do all the touristy things. Well, one of them is to get into a black cat. They're just so legendary and synonymous when London, and I know there are other places as well. <clears throat> but for me, I've got to do that. In today's video, Tom is going to talk about a mystery? I don't know. Is there something nefarious going on? I don't know. Today's video's title, 33% of London's taxi drivers are missing. And why? Is it something nefarious? Or is it something like, if I had to guess, you know, you're just not having as many uh, drivers out there like there used to be. Um, maybe COVID had something to do with it. Government regulations, maybe, that have kind of stunted the growth of of the of the industry. I don't know. Tom's going to explain. Uh, come sit with me on this big fake couch. We're going to learn something today. Uh, and before we start, go support. Tom over on his channel. Links, of course, are in the description, and let's do it. We are losing 1,000 London taxi drivers every year. If this trend continues at this rate, there will be no more London taxi drivers by 2040. In the best case scenario, we need a massive influx of people to come on the knowledge just to keep our numbers stable. So what's causing this decline and what can be done about it? Well, I'm going to explore all of that in this video. This game's finished. Always has been. You're better off on the I hope not. Before I get into my points, I've got to explain why this is a big issue. You might be thinking, well, Tom, you are a London taxi driver. Surely if there's less taxi drivers out there, then you will have less competition. That means you're more profitable, yeah. you can earn more money, and your job's going to be much better. Short term, yes, I will be busier, and it is quite a nice feeling to always have one passenger in and out. But long term, not very good for the passenger. Think about it, if you're at Supply Liverpool Street demand. Station or somewhere late at night, it's raining and you're waiting 10 minutes for a taxi, 20 minutes for a taxi, 
and you have no idea as to when or where that taxi is going to appear from, you might be willing to search for alternatives, even if you wouldn't normally use the other mob. That is an Uber. Uber probably has like those ride shares. Those have probably had an effect as well. It's the ultimate problem. We need a reliable service. And we already see this in the height of the summer, Wimbledon tennis, or maybe if there's a big gig going on at the O2, lots of people have to go about getting a taxi or wait a very long time because there's not enough taxis to cover the demand. Taxi numbers have kind of always floated around the 25,000 mark. And that includes all London drivers, which is green badge like myself. We mainly concentrate on the center, but we can pick up and do work wherever. And suburban drivers, yellow badge drivers who work in a specific sector, usually on an outer borough of London. You'll see from 2009-10, you know, the number's just under 25,000. And that remained the case till about 2015, 2016. Compared with now, the total drivers as of mid-June 2024 is 17,250. Oh, wow. So from 2013, 14, 10 years ago to now, 2023, 2024, drop. we've had a reduction of around 8,000 taxi drivers. That's almost a third of our workforce has gone missing in 10 years. So what could be causing such downturns in the number of London taxi drivers? Well, many of you are probably shouting and screaming at the screen right now and saying Uber. But I don't think <laughs> it's quite that simple because in 2009-10, we had almost 25,000 drivers and Uber came to London in 2012. And by that time, our numbers had increased. Okay, there might have been a bit of a lag because 2012, Uber comes to town. Let's say you started the knowledge in 2012. Well, it takes a few years to get through the knowledge, so maybe it takes a few more years for those numbers to be expressed. Even by 2016, 2017, five... So when he's saying the knowledge, like learning the... Even for an Uber driver, you have to learn... Is that what he means? Even for an Uber driver has to like take a knowledge test to be an Uber driver. I could be way off here. I'm not sure the knowledge, what he's referring to, just getting to know the city, I'm guessing. Five years after Uber had come to town, we were only down by 500 drivers expressed in 2009, 2010. But we can look at private hire data and obviously Ubers will fall into private hire category. 2009, 10, almost 60,000 private hire drivers. By 2016, 2017, that number had almost doubled. So Uber was clearly having an effect in London at this time, yeah. but that wasn't being represented in taxi driver numbers. Also, if it was down to Uber, I think us taxi drivers would experience a massive decline in work, even if we have got less drivers. So whilst Uber may have a bit of an impact on the number of taxi drivers in London, I don't believe this to be the sole reason. Now, whilst I've discussed the worrying topic of losing taxi drivers, one area that you don't have to worry about is losing your hair. And that is through today's sponsor, which is Manual. Now, Manual is men's hair. This is obviously an ad. Obviously, I've already lost my hair, so we're just going to go ahead and skip over this. Bear with me. Check out the Trustpilot reviews. Manual are that confident that you'll find oh, the right treatment to support you. Manual are giving you a myco opinion yeah, from yeah. regrowing. Room 12 for starting the knowledge. You are. Now, I can't actually find the exact numbers of those on oh, the knowledge. Yeah, there is somewhere that TFL put online about where students are in the knowledge process. So how many are already going through it? How many are newly applied, etc. But we know that the numbers are basically going down. A couple of reasons for this. First off was a huge blunder on TFL's part that they weren't accepting new applications onto the knowledge during the pandemic. You must stay at home. I was actually contacted by many people who were interested in beginning the knowledge, especially in a time like the pandemic, because sure. historically, times of recession and things like that, prompts people to think about their career options, maybe move into a new career, have more agency in their life and take up such a challenge as the knowledge. TFL weren't actually taking on new applications. I think 
because of a lot of departments working from home, many people were just emailing and just getting nothing back. They wanted to do this. I've just found an article here that the applications in the year of 2012 was 3,000 students. And in 2021, it was just 174. The numbers are rising again now. That This cites the fact that in 2024, the total hit 579. So that's Dang. triple the figure from 2021. We'll probably get a bit of an influx as well because we've had companies such as Free Now, Get, Addison Lee, private hire firms who are giving subsidies and grants to their drivers to be able to go ahead and do the knowledge. What's the knowledge then? So the knowledge is, of course, the in-depth study that every cabbie has to do to earn their badge. And it takes around two to four years to complete this. Wow. The newspapers, pundits, etc., will exert the idea that it's too difficult, it's too archaic, and it needs to be scrapped and removed. And so much so that City Hall, the Mayor of London, TfL, have all actively questioned the idea of do we just kind of scrap it or do we dumb it down in some way? I speak with most cab drivers in that we would not want the knowledge dumbed down in any way, shape or form. But I personally would rather have no standard than a lower standard. I have to agree there. Um, as a passenger, I would want my driver to have, you know, all the tools to get me to where I want to go, obviously. If they know the streets really well, they can take side streets to avoid, like he does. Uh, as a, it's, you don't want to dumb it down. You're gonna dumb it down, then you're gonna. It's gonna be like trying to get a cab here in Los Angeles or something. It's just you just hope you get there. <laughs> but yeah, I think they said that London's the hardest city to learn. Um, and it's just crazy the knowledge that these guys, you know, have to be able to drive around and avoid and just to get you where you want to go. It's pretty impressive. At least if they got rid of it entirely, you knew where you stood with the cab drivers who are out on the street. In terms of it being too hard or archaic, I call bullshit on that because... Ah. The knowledge has always been difficult. People know that it's an investment of time. It's not hard in terms of the difficulty, like doing the knowledge is not difficult in the actual process. What is difficult about it is the consistency. It is showing up, it is having that cadence and that commitment to the process from start to finish. And bearing in mind your knowledge journey takes over three years, it's the reason why it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do because the cadence is full on, full time, but sustained over multiple years. Over time, the testing system has become much more fairer and transparent. If you go back to the 70s, 80s, 90s, drivers would have no idea where they would be in the system on the knowledge. Were they getting much closer to their badge? You could sort of find out by what stage you was on. You would be on the more quicker stages, i.e. Uh, 28 days, 21 days, and 14 days back in the day, but you would never know when you would drop down into those stages, right? It was just at the discretion of the examiner, seemingly. Whereas now, it's a standardized system where I, as a student on the knowledge, could see my progress. Okay, if I score on two more exams, I'll get my drop, and then potentially it could be eight more exams until I get my badge. I would argue that since the pandemic, with low traffic neighborhoods and less availability of roads, the oh, amount right. you have to learn or the amount of opportunities of being able to wiggle through little back streets is less. So there's less to think about. You are more stuck on the main roads. Also, there's no redlining system. So the red line was basically a system that could send you back to preceding stages if your standard dropped and that would add a lot of time on the knowledge. Where we are currently is probably the best incentive to get people to come on the knowledge. Now, what else could be driving the lower driver numbers? Well, I think the vehicle has a big part to play here. From 2017, you could not license a new diesel taxi in London. So even though Mercedes was still making the veto, if you went and bought one and tried to bring it into London, it wasn't allowed. London were getting rid of diesels, and the same oh, went for electric. TX4s as well. Following on from this, Age limits of diesel taxis were reduced from 15 years down to 12 years. Basically, when you have a taxi in London, the maximum amount of time you're allowed to use it for is 15 years 
as a licensed London taxi. Doesn't matter how many miles you've put on it, doesn't matter if it sails through every single MOT, if you've kept it in the most pristine condition, if you've left it in a garage for 15 years, from when it's first registered until it reaches oh, 15th dang. birthday, it's yeah. 15th year of service, it is no longer allowed to be used as a licensed London taxi. With the diesels, three years was chopped off the lifespan. So imagine this, you're age 62, you've got a London taxi that you paid off seven years ago and it took you five years to pay off. So that taxi is now 12 years old. You're roaming around stress-free in London because you haven't got to pay any rent or any lease payments on your taxi. That's paid off, everything you take is pure profit. Then a little man at City Hall turns around and says, <laughs> diesels are the devil, you are no longer allowed to have one more than 12 years old in London. Yes, your money-making vehicle is no longer allowed in London. So at the age of 62, with potentially three more years before hanging up your badge for retirement, yeah, why? are you really going to commit to a brand new taxi? And the options now aren't diesel, they're electric taxis. Transport for London, at the same 000. time, brought out a de-licensing wow. scheme. So depending when you get in on the scheme, you could get between 6,000 and 10,000 pound for your old diesel taxi, which the mayor has just deemed is completely worthless. So that 62 year old man who was gonna wait a few more years before retirement has effectively got a final lump sum to send him off into the sunset of That's his not time. Even that much. I'm not saying that every single driver was near retirement age or all their circumstances were the same because I know of drivers who did the de-licensing scheme and yes, did go and get a new taxi, but it would have made more sense if that scheme oh, was yeah. more promoted was towards yeah. converting people to electric rather than just getting rid of an older diesel. Oh, and to top it off, this also coincided with COVID-19. So work levels were exceptionally low anyway. So the lucrative payment of a de-licensing scheme couldn't have come at a better time. And the frustrating thing was, unless you had a Euro 6 taxi, it didn't matter where in the cycle of ownership on your diesel taxi you was. You could have gone down the dealership a couple of months prior and then the mayor announces that sorry 12 years is the oldest that cab can be not 15. these drivers just had three years removed off of their income potential overnight so these three oh. events diesels being age reduced the de-licensing scheme and covid19 were a perfect storm to encourage cab drivers to sell up and take an early retirement but why not rent a taxi in the short term well Taxi fleets also got hit hard in COVID. Pretty much everyone who rented a taxi took it back to the garage and said, here you go, I can't make any money. I can't afford to pay this taxi on a weekly basis. You have it. And we saw the images of those taxi-like graveyards where fleet owners had to find creative ways of storing all these taxis that were normally let out to drivers. The issue was is that you've got a lot of stock sat there not earning you any money. So to free up a bit of cash flow, many of the fleets downsized. They got rid of their taxis. Added in the fact that there was the de-licensing scheme, meaning that they were incentivized for doing so. The problem, of course, was that when work levels returned in late 2020 and summer of 2021, there wasn't enough cabs to go around. Drivers who had hung up their badge, gone and worked as Tesco delivery driver, couldn't go back to their old garage and get their cab back as easily as they once had. In fact, there was outcry. There was so many drivers who desperately needed to get hold of a taxi, sure but the fleet owners couldn't provide it. Four or 5,000 potential drivers looking for cabs, they will have to seek, seek employment elsewhere. And like I said before, you know, when they phone up, I said, don't hand your notice in yet. I can't bring you back into, into our game. Added to the fact that fleet owners couldn't go out and buy new taxis because there was financial restraints on lending during that weird pandemic time. So many of them wanted to reinvest and buy newer vehicles, but they weren't able to get the finance to do so. Work levels were at an all time high and drivers were literally sitting on their hands, begging fleets for a taxi. And this still wow. hasn't fully recovered. We still have more taxi drivers than physical vehicles to go around. Yes, I know not every taxi driver is out there physically working right now, but you still need a good stock of cabs. And what this has actually now done is that it's removed some of the part-time workforce that we had. Pre-pandemic, you used to be able to go down to oh, right. some taxi garages on a weekend and say, hey, 
Can I rent a cab by the day? Or I just want the cab for the weekend. More drivers are actually in rental cabs long term. They don't chop and change like they once did. Rental garages also want a bit more of an agreement because these taxis are exceptionally expensive. So they want to be able to ensure that all their finances and costs are covered. It basically means that taxi driving is very much a full-time occupation. It's not something that can be done as easily part-time as it once was. And I imagine as a result, we've lost some of the smaller fleets. Even Asher Moses of Sherbert Taxi Rentals spoke of his concerns in the Mayor of London Assembly related to the knowledge and taxi drivers, just how difficult it is being able to grow and expand his fleet because of the cost of the vehicles. I can't afford the, the vehicles today with a seven and a half yeah. thousand grant. We won't be buying more yeah. vehicles. What about the younger entrants to the trade, the, the newer driver, the lifeblood, the, the long-term drivers that are coming through? People like me that are probably starting embarking on this career. Where are they? Well, I imagine in the 70s, 80s and 90s, once you left school, unless you kind of got a skill, you know, became, I don't know, a carpenter, a labourer of some sort, there wasn't really that much out there in terms of work. And added to the fact that if the knowledge was a viable option, there would have been lots of people doing that and you would have seen people do that. But now, if you're a Gen Z, there is an abundance of opportunities out there and I don't envy them one bit. You can I hadn't even thought of that. <laughs> yeah, new, the kids coming out who are becoming workforce ready, uh, more of the you know tech industry, whether and they can make money online. I mean YouTube, right? I mean, I mean Tom's doing it now, but um, he's doing it to you know on top of his uh, current career. But yeah. Yeah, the, the kids coming out today, a lot of them will just choose to make money online doing whatever. I didn't even think of that. Could day trade crypto. You could become a YouTube superstar. Ding. You could go to university, <laughs> long-term travel, geo-arbitrage and work in different places, cushy working from home jobs. There's just too many options available. The glamorous life of being a taxi driver is just a little bit too far down that roster of the more, quote, glamorous jobs that are above it. On the face of it, it doesn't seem like a glamorous job, but what I did was that I reversed engineered what I wanted from life. I didn't really like working in a corporate structure. I couldn't get on with company politics. It felt like I was chained to a desk and having to turn up Monday to Friday, nine to five just seemed awful. Retail was a little it bit is. better, but I didn't really like working weekends. And the trouble with retail is that you get into management and there's not really much else to go from there. So I wanted some kind of autonomy me, some control of my life or being able to have a life and then work would come second. And that's what taxi driving has offered to me. I go on frequent holidays throughout the year. I've done some extended periods of travel. I learned how to snowboard. I started this YouTube channel. It's offered me everything and more that I want from life. But I think people just look at the actual nature of what the job is and just think, ah, that's not cool or sexy enough. And they don't go for it when <laughs> I love it. I love getting in my cab. I love driving around town. The fact that the cab is mine, it is my own vehicle. And I get to fully authentically show up as me, not as someone else, not within a corporate entity. Look, awesome. I love the London taxi trade. And if you've made it this far into the video, please hit the subscribe button because that does wonders in helping me be able to promote the London taxi trade and hopefully save us on many of the issues I've shared within this video. If you wanna learn how to become a London taxi driver, well, I made an in-depth guide of all the steps of what to expect throughout the entire process. I'll leave that on screen for you now. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. I think we're all better that Tom loves, and I'm sure there's many others like him who love being a driver, and I think it's awesome that they do. Um, he's so right, though. It's, you know, you think of a, a taxi driver, you, you don't think it's sexy, you know, a glamorous job. So a lot of kids today probably are turned off by it, you know. Um, but yeah, a lot of factors have played a role in the numbers of cabbies of dropping. And uh, I think if I was younger, um, I don't know. I, I would do it, I think. Um, 
I love meeting people and talking to people and driving them around. I, yeah. I don't know if I'd want to do Uber only because Uber treats their, their, at least here in the States, treats their drivers like crud. So I think being more independent as a cabbie, as a taxi driver, I think it's, it's better. But yeah, interesting. Interesting to say the least. I am uh, so excited to get into one of those. You know, I couldn't imagine them not being around. I get why they want to make vehicles like cabs and, and, and buses, for that matter, electric. Um, really more of a you know combustional, uh, combustible, <laughs> I can't even say it, uh, engine guy, gas. Um, so, um, but I get, I get the push for electric cars, but I mean, the backbone of, of the electrical grid is coal in most places. So, <laughs> um, what are we doing here? Anyway, um, at least it is here in the States anyhow. Um, cool video. I enjoyed that. Please, 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 please go support Tom and his journey as a taxi driver. The links, of course, are in the description to the video and to his channel. Please go and support him. Say hello. Like if you feel like subscribing, subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to do that with our channel, you, you know, it's always cool too. I don't ask for it because this isn't my career. This is just for me to learn. And if you want to come along, great. If you don't, great. Uh, I think it's like 80% or more. It's probably higher than that of the people who watch. And it may not be even that high. I don't know. Aren't subscribed who watch the, the videos that we're all doing. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I enjoy hanging out with all of you. So that's, that is why I do it. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Hope you're all happy, healthy, and safe. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Mark from the States. Mark from the States. It's Mark. Yeah.